After Effects has a tool that allows you to remove an object from the background to select a moving object. It's actually a tool and an effect combination. It's the Rotor Brush tool combined with the Rotor Brush and Refine Edge effect. It's not entirely an automated process. It takes some manual labor and takes some time and can be very tedious sometimes, but it's a lot easier than selecting an object one frame at a time. So to see how it works, go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and go on down to Roto Brush. Our goal here is to select this gentleman looking in the microscope and remove him from the background. Then we can replace the background or change how the background looks or change how he looks for that matter. We're also going to go over here and change the color of the uniforms of those two guys by selecting those uniforms and then changing the color. And we're going to do these things using the Roto Brush tool. I included the Roto Brush in this chapter because it is a brush, but you don't need to have the paint panel or the brush panel open when you work with it. To work with a brush, though, you have to be inside the layer panel, so double click on this layer to open up the layer panel. And now the brush is up here, and notice that it has a little triangle there, meaning that if you click here, you're going to see more than one thing. It's two tools, the Rotor Brush tool and the Refine Edge tool. And the workflow is that you use the Rotor Brush tool first to create a mat, and then you use the Refine Edge tool to fix that mat if, for example, there's some hair, kind of flyaway hair, what have you. But most of the work is done with the Rotor Brush tool, and you have to do this first before you use the Refine Edge tool. So I click on that to make it active. When I hover inside here, you see a little green cross there. That's actually the brush, but it's very small. So to make it larger, we just hold on the control of the command key, click the mouse button, and just drag right or left, up and down, to make it larger or smaller. Now I see that the brush is green and has a cross in it. That's the thing you use to select the object, the foreground. If you hold on the Alt or the Option key, it turns red with a little minus sign. That's the thing you use to select the background, essentially remove things from the foreground. And you use both things off and on, back and forth. So the Alt of the Option key and the Control key will be things you use frequently when you work with a Rotor Brush tool. The way the Rotor Brush tool works is that you make a base frame. You make a really good selection. And then from that base frame, After Effects tries to then select the object going forward and backward from that point. So I'm going to go inside here a little ways. Let's say you're right about there. And I'm going to try to select this gentleman, the microscope, his hand, and the bottom here. And then we'll go back and forth from there. To start the selection process is fairly simple. It's kind of like the quick selection tool in Photoshop, if you've used that, where you select an object from inside the object, and then that tool looks for the edges of the object. Except the quick selection tool requires a little bit more precision. The rotoscope tool is like drawing a stick figure. So I just go up here and click and drag, off to his shoulder, down here, over here, like that. I'll skip the microscope for now because it's so small. Now I'm going to zoom in and take care of the stuff where it went too far or didn't include things. So I hold on Control or Command Plus a couple times to go in. I make the brush smaller by holding the Control or the Command key and dragging it down to the left like that. Now we're going to include the microscope by just dragging right like that. And notice it didn't get that part there because the color is so similar to the background. And I'm not going to worry about that because to select that little part right there is extremely difficult because the colors are so similar. So we're just going to assume that that's just not part of the microscope. Click the edge there to get that. I need to get rid of this blue area here. To get rid of it, I hold on the Alt or the Option key to put that in the background, essentially. And that worked pretty well. I want to get rid of that, too. Alt or Option, click there. Pretty good. Put on here as well. Now, I need to make the brush a little bit smaller, so hold on the Control or the Command key and make it smaller. Alt or Option. I'm just clicking. I'm not dragging at this point. All right, let's change the scene a little bit here. Hold on the space bar, move it around. Let's include this area here and this area down here. Now I want to get rid of this blue area and this blue here while including the rest of the microscope. I want to include his hand too. That worked pretty well. But now I need to get rid of this blue. So again, hold on the Alt or the Option key, just drag in there. Hopefully it'll find the edges. Did a pretty good job, but a little too far there, so I can include that now. This may seem awfully tedious, and it is, but I want to just show you the process. You want to make a good base frame, because if you have a good base frame, then you usually do a pretty good job getting the rest of the object selected forward and back from this point. This little blue's got to go, and this is going to be the trickiest thing here, getting rid of that blue, because it's so small. So I'm going to make the cursor a little bit smaller. Control or Command, drag it smaller. I'm just going to draw a very small line here. Alt, just draw a tiny line like that. That did a pretty good job. All right, that's the thing. It did go too far here, so I'm going to fix that. And then it undid all that hard work, so try again. Little, little itty bitty line. That was better. This thing down here, I'll just skip it for now because it's so similar in color. Let's drag it around a little bit more, check the edges. I want to include his sleeve. And that's fine, not include that computer. 
Check this out. Let's move up here. Let's try to include his ear while we're at it, shall we? A little bit farther. Didn't quite get to the edge of the ear there because of the light falling on it. He's pretty well backlit here, which can be good and bad. In our case, it's helpful to a certain degree. Let's just drag him around a little bit more. Let's get his hair here. Got too far. Alt key, option key. Get rid of that little extra bit there. All right. right over here. Get that going there. A little bit more ear. A little bit more ear. And let's check out the rest of his hair. I think that's fine. Maybe add a little bit more hair there. Zoom all the way out. Shift forward slash. I think we've got a pretty good selection. All right, now we have the base frame represented by that orange square there. And these chevrons going out either side there represent the span, 20 frames in each direction. Now the span doesn't mean that much actually. What it's saying is that if you go 20 frames in either direction, that purple frame will still exist. It doesn't say though that it will exist in the right place. It's just saying that there will be a purple boundary in either direction that you go. If you want to check your work though, you need to go one frame at a time and see how things work. So I'm going to page down here once and look at the boundary and see how it works. Each time I page down, I'm telling After Effects, this works. Good job. It's fine. If I want to change something, I need to change it at this point and then go forward from there. I can't jump way ahead, let's say, and then make some changes and have it fill in the gaps. It won't. Any change you apply will change going forward from this point. And if you go backwards, if you go left of that dot, then any change you make will go from that point then to the left, earlier into the comp. So I'll continue to page down here and take a look at how things are going here. At some point, I'm going to want to fill in that little gap there, but maybe After Effects will do it automatically. Let's see here. One frame at a time here. I think we're doing well. That little gap came in by itself. So it's behaving pretty well. After Effects learned pretty well how to deal with this based upon our base frame. Now, when I get to that last spot in the span there, this purple line is going to disappear or just actually go around the entire frame. Watch this. Boom, it popped around the entire frame there. That's because we're outside of that span. We can expand the span, and now that purple frame will reappear. It's appearing where it thinks it ought to go, and so far After Effects is doing a pretty good job figuring out what we want. I'm going to go a little bit farther here by dragging the cursor forward rather than going one frame at a time in the hopes that it gets it right. But we need to watch it and see what happens. So it takes a while to do this. You can see the little green bar going across there saying, OK, I'm looking at each frame here, and I won't tell you how I did until I get to where your cursor is. And then, bam, now we take a look at it. And looking here, seeing that it looks pretty good. I'm very pleased with how this is working. This is a relatively easy subject to select, the exception of the blue areas there and that thing there. Where the problem will arise here is when the microscope gets past the screen and the black lower right-hand corner of that will want to join the microscope. So we'll go a little bit farther forward here to that point. All right, I almost got there. I'm going to take the current time indicator a little bit farther forward outside of the span, and that's where the problem will come in. So let me drag the span to that point and see how it does. And we'll probably have to back up. I see it included the little black area there this time. So I'm going to back up a little bit here. So I can't fix it at this point and expect it to go backwards. So I'm going to go back here. And right there where it first comes in is where I need to fix it. So I'm going to do a controller command plus to zoom in a bit. And I'm going to fix this by holding on the alt or the option key and drag that to get rid of the black. All right, let's go forward now and see how that works. So page down. And it should learn from that. And it did. Look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my span here and pull it all the way to the right on the assumption that After Effects will get it right later on. All right, let's go back to this point here where we started. Now we can go this other direction to the left and see how things go. So I do page up now. Let me zoom back out, shift forward slash, page up. I'm looking at things here to see how things work here. And problems will come in right there. That'll be the problem area there. It's so hard to select such a small area. Notice that if I go page down, that frame worked. Page up, that frame didn't. So we need to fix that. I'll go controller command plus a couple times and we'll fix that. We could do this ad tedium ad nauseum for the rest of the day. I'm not going to do too much of this. I just want to show you the process here. So I'll make a little selection there. Hopefully it won't select everything, but it did. Unselect that area now. Just a little dot there. That did better. Okay, now we'll go page up one more time, see how it handles that. It handled it well, yay. Up, oh, and it lost it again. Try again, little dot. It fills up the whole thing. Remove it like that. Another little dot here. Just to try to expand that blue area. And notice that when we do this, it gets part of the microscope in. 
Now we do page up again, and we lose it again. I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing while I try to repair all those little blue areas, because that's the trouble spot, because the color is so close to the color of the lab coat and the color of the microscope. So you can see it's not a perfect solution, but it's done it reasonably well, so at least you can see how the process works. Now I'm going to zoom back out, shift forward slash. And now that we've done all this work, what does it all mean? Well, let me just go back to the comp here and take a look. We've now taken that guy out of the background. But we can refine the edge a little bit. So I'm going to put a solid layer behind him to kind of see how it looks. So I'm going to go down here and right click, new solid. We'll make it gray, that's fine. Drag it below him. Now I want to zoom in on him a bit to get a closer look at it. So I'll do Control or Command Plus a couple of times. You can see it's kind of a ragged edge there. If we select him, there is the effect. And you can work on the mat here. You can feather it to kind of soften the edge a little bit. So I'll just do that a little bit here. And you see how the edge gets softer there? If I go to a high contrast, it gets kind of aliased. Makes it a little too precise. See, it gets kind of rough around the edges there. So I kind of like the default of 80 or a little bit less than 80 for the contrast. Scrolling down to the bottom, decontaminate edge. The blue background is kind of bleeding into the edge there. We can adjust that by decontaminating it, meaning take away that color. So I click on that. We'll see if that makes a difference, let's say, to the microscope or to his skin. And see, it fixes a little bit. But you can do more by opening up this disclosure triangle there like that. And you can increase the decontamination like so. And that really takes care of the color issues there. So that's the basic process to create this mat. If he had flyaway hair, we would want to use the refined edge tool, or the refined edge part of this effect. But we don't need to do that for him right now. And we'll save that for the next lesson. Let me do a shift forward slash. Once you've done this, you can go back to the layer panel. There's a little thing down here that says freeze. And what freeze does, it creates something like a video that it stores inside here. So when you play this thing back, it plays back smoothly. If I were to play this back now, it would not play back smoothly because it's going through the process each time of sort of recreating these frames. But if you freeze it, that means you can't apply the refined edge to it. You need to decide when you're done making the mat and the refined edge. If there's no need for refined edge, then you can just click freeze and you're done. But you can always unfreeze later so you're not sort of stuck. Nevertheless, I'll just leave the freeze alone now and go back to the comp view here. Let's just add the original background. So I'm going to take this microscope layer, Control or Command D to duplicate it. And I'm going to take this, which is now the background essentially, and then take away the effect by clicking on the effect and deleting it. Now it looks like we've got the original thing, right? But I'm going to make the background darker and a little bit out of focus. So I'll go over here and go to Fast Blur and put that on the background layer and repeat the edges here like that and blur it a bit. And we'll go, let's say, make it darker by putting in, let's say, curves. And we'll go get curves, apply that. And make it a tad darker. Emphasize the guy in the microscope. You can also change his color a little bit. So let's add curves to him. So you can adjust the foreground as well. We'll just fix the red side of the curve here a bit. A little bit warmer looking like that. So that's something you can do. You can put an entirely different background in. Go back to the project panel and take this abstract waves and put that in instead. And we could do the same kind of routine to that one. We could put a blur on it and see how that works. In any event, you can see how this works. You can use the rotor brush to select an object and lift it from the background, replace the background, change the background, what have you. Let's do one more thing here. I want to show you the changing of the guard. Not to go through the entire process all over again, but to show you that you can select more than one object at a time. So double click on this. We'll open up the layer panel. Go get our rotor brush tool again. Click on that. I'm going to zoom in a bit here so I can see the guard better. Control or Command Plus. Hold on the space bar and move them around a bit there. I want to select that jacket. It's fairly easy to select. It's a pretty distinct color. I'm going to hold on my space bar and go across to the other guy. And select that jacket as well. The sleeve. The sleeve as well. That bottom part of the sleeve there. Okay. Now that I've selected both of them, I'm just going to take the span and drag it across for the entire length, assuming that it's going to get it right. It might not, but we'll assume it's going to get it right. Go back to the comp panel, and you see that it's just these two little jackets that show up there. So you take this layer, Controller Command-D, duplicate it. Go on down there and remove that effect. Now it looks like nothing's happened, but I'm going to go back to this first one. Scrolling down to hue saturation and put that on that top one. And let's just change the hue of the jackets. Something like that. We can darken them up a little bit. Something like that to make them less obtrusive so that we focus our attention on the changing of the guard. 
So there you go, that's how I use the rotor brush tool and its associated rotor brush and refine edge effect to select moving objects in a scene.